Hey, this is the Nate Jamar Rick Smith. And believe it or not, whether you like it or don't like it, learn to love it. Because you have to listen to Wrestling Is Real. It is the best thing going today. Woo! The worldwide leader of podcasting excellence. The king of podcasts radio network proudly presents The Wrestling Is Real Podcast. Because wrestling needs us. Yes, some of you fans out there are in great anticipation to talk about this very episode when we are only days away from the Royal Rumble of 2024 here on the Wrestling Observer Podcast. I almost just took a drink of water and it just kind of like was about to go and come back out of me. Anyway, King of Podcasts here with you. Wrestling Observer Podcast. What number am I at right now? My God, I am like moving along like it's no tomorrow. Yeah. Episode 822, moving along here, 11th year, 11 years in, 12th year now in right now with the program, so it's doing great. So let's go and talk about it. And I always think about when we get back to this point every year, am I getting any more of a feel like we're getting somewhere with the Rumble booking more than it just being a match where only the outcomes of the winners are considered and nothing else? Because that's the biggest thing I get from this. I want to put it like this. The Royal Rumble is the greatest opportunity you have all year. Where you have all these wrestlers in the ring. And there are various feuds you can begin as a result of it. You know, when I see some of the battle royals that AEW will do. They like to go ahead and spurn off a couple of feuds from it. But this company, WWE, doesn't want to do that. Now, what they will do is, in some cases, sure, they'll let a particular star become the one that will get the most eliminations, which is fine. And, you know, they'll also put a consideration and make a point of the wrestlers that spend the longest time in the match, whether they're the first, second, third, whatever, or the longest amount of time they spent in the match. But... Sure, their accolades can be brought up later, but does it really matter in the long run what happens to them in their career? Because when you look at who they can be bringing on right now as the wrestlers are going to be featured in the matches, in the Royal Rumble matches this year for the women, men's and women's side, you have to ask yourself, if you want some of these stars here, okay, when they are... At a crossroads, you're like, okay, listen, Vince screwed him up. There's a lot of Vince screw ups right now that are on this main roster that Triple H is trying to resuscitate, trying to rejuvenate, trying to revive his NXT darlings of the black and gold era. He hasn't gotten it done yet. There are a number of stars now. He's trying to go and rebuild back up to get somewhere. I didn't want to say this yet. But, you know, there's a difference between what Sami Zayn did with the bloodline and the seriousness of that storyline, which was a bit goofy at the beginning, and what R-Truth is doing with Judgment Day. Now, R-Truth adding comedy to Judgment Day, yeah, that's great. R-Truth is excellent at what he does in terms of comedy relief on that program. No doubt about it. Every time, knock out the park. And whenever they need to bring him on board, he does. You know? But for the Judgment Day as a faction... They're doing this because there is some stagnation in that group. Like, remember, remember, we're not getting much out of what we want to hear from Damian Priest or Finn Balor. I mean, it's Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley. Those are the targets. Those are the attractions of the group, of a four-person group. There are two people that are really stand out. The other two are not, no matter how good they are. They're just pit carters. But the faction altogether does not elevate all the group. Meanwhile, the bloodline, everyone's elevated, all of them. Remember, Solo Sokoa in the bloodline itself has been elevated from a guy that was not NXT, brought onto this faction. He is instantly a main eventer right now. And he has, you know, been in very much high profile semi main event features so far. And he's been main eventer on very many of the TV shows on SmackDown because they do that. So the other bloodline members, but Judgment Day, do you get it so much here? Not so much. If they are, they're in tag team action. And don't talk to me about J.D. McDonough. Don't talk to me about about J.D. McDonough. He's not counted. 
really not considered. But they they brought him in here. He's part of the mix. But really, when you look at the matches themselves and you go back at what they've done, you know, we've had some hiccups in the Royal Rumble. If we want to go back 10 years, we could talk about that. Or didn't you, Brian, didn't win it when he could have? When Roman Reigns did, when people didn't want it? We had Shane McMahon book it two years ago, apparently, and shit the bed. Right? I mean, there's a lot of this where... When they do the creative process of putting the matches together, putting the match together, okay, it's one match you're booking for. And you want to individualize, okay, this person is going to come in here for this much time. They're going to do this. Some of it's going to be on the fly. But the thing is that where are we, what are we doing to can book angles that are come up off, off the Royal Rumble that are going to stand out? Because it's always something that comes up that it's always in the main event picture. But the mid-card picture is nothing. And nothing that really stands out in the mid card that makes us really just go all of a sudden, whoa. Which is the bulk of the main of the undercard that needs to fill up WrestleMania on both shows and needs to also generate enough interest for the TV show or the TV shows to combat the constant barrage of live sports that are going on. All right? For. Monday Night Raw to pull 1.3, 1.4 million. Sure, they're going up against Monday Night Football with 31 million viewers or with 29 million viewers for the Buccaneers and Eagles, of which that game I watched, I was watching at the bar. I was watching that over Raw. That's just how it's going to be. Plus, you had NBA action, among other things. Like, you're just, it's a barrage of live sports, and they're not going to get a chance to get in, like, breathe for air with what they had to go up against. It wasn't going to happen. You had a full slate of NBA action because of Martin Luther King Jr. Day and NFL football because you had a, a, an unexpected doubleheader. I mean, it didn't roll into the 8 o'clock hour, but you already had an audience that was like definitely drawn in watching football before you got to Raw at 8 o'clock at night because the first NFL wildcard game on Monday night, rescheduled, didn't finish till 745. So there's not much of a point where people are going to go right over to Raw wrestling. You're going to miss that audience. And then what else do you have that goes up and helps them out? So they lost out to that. But they're not getting anything that's drawing in mainstream attention. Just their fan base. And not even the full fan base because the 1.7, 1.8 million that would normally get without football, they're not there. And this is WrestleMania time. And they're struggling right now. They're not getting the numbers. So the national title game, you know, when you have all this going on, like, where's the attention? One of the things that's not happening this time around, let's just be honest, is that we don't have that many of the free agents, the normal gamut of things that Vince would normally do to try to make good on the fact that, you know, WrestleMania time's here and he's to feel like WrestleMania season. So you've already teased Rock and Roman Reigns, a little bit of back and forth talking, but no confrontations. You got CM Punk talking to Drew McIntyre. Okay. And then what else? You got what uh, you know a couple of different opponents, potential contenders against Roman Reigns. Oh, Randy Orton returning. Okay. You got Cody going up against Shinsuke, and then there's some more uh, going with him where he's got other people to go up against. But really, I mean, Logan Paul now has a match with Kevin Owens. We know that for the U.S. title. But other than that, what else is there? Like we don't have the barrage of like the talent that comes in at WrestleMania time to go ahead and, you know, really build things back up because Vince has always relied on part-timers and legends to come back. You know, the occasional shot of Goldberg or, you know, is Bad, is Bad Bunny off a tour? Like, you got a key come on down? You got The Rock now teasing a match, so that helps. I mean, the thing is, Philadelphia's already basically sold out. It's about to sell out. Pretty easy chance they're going to do that. The worldwide audience is enough that they're going to get the cult-like following that's going to go and spend their money and make their way to Philadelphia, spend their week there, all that. Like, people will book their vacations around WrestleMania. So that's not even a question. They're going to sell that out. But what are you going to give these people to pay off WrestleMania? And what are you going to do right now for Tropicana Field in outside of Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg, for Royal Rumble? to get people there and excited about the match. 
Now, you did set up matches, but let me tell you, when you look at what they have set up for matches at the moment, the current setup for the Fatal 4-Way match you're going to set up at the Royal Rumble, does anyone in the right mind honestly believe that Randy Orton, AJ Styles, or LA Knight, they're going to be one of the ones that's going to take down Roman Reigns to become champion? Sure. What you did was you created that Roman Reigns might not be the one that has to be pinned. That's what you created. That's all you created. That's the only thing that you have here that makes people think that he's going to lose. You can't book it that way. You absolutely have to make it where Roman Reigns must be pinned if he's going to drop the belt after three and a half years. It has to be that way. I don't think anybody else can expect it to be anything less than that. And it won't happen to the Royal Rumble. It has to be WrestleMania. There's obviously a long-term plan in place. Who are they going to have that takes that spot? And by the way, in that match, we don't see Cody Rhodes. He's not putting that mix. We don't see him CM Punk in that match either. We know what's going to happen. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what's going to happen. You, you know this too. The Fatal 4-Way, these three opponents here will most likely be entering into the Elimination Chamber. Red Roman Reigns will probably have to go ahead and put the title up on the line once again, right? That's what they'll probably do. Now, some people think that Rock and Roman Reigns are going to have an Elimination Chamber. No, no, you can't book it there. You got to book it at WrestleMania. That's a WrestleMania match. You can't put it on Elimination Chamber, no matter if it's going to be in a big venue and all this. No, 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 no. you got to put the match at WrestleMania. It should be there. And if you're going to have it where Roman Reigns drops the belt to The Rock, okay. But it still comes down to the fact that who do you have feasibly that could be, besides The Rock beating Roman Reigns for the title, you still got to think about, okay, if it's The Rock that's champion at, you know, after WrestleMania or Roman Reigns after WrestleMania, who's the one that's going to be either one of them? Whether The Rock comes in and becomes, what, a transitional champion? Or Roman Reigns finally gets beaten for the first time and is pinned in a singles match with the titles in the line and he drops the belt. They've booked it this high. We all know that Cody Rhodes, people are all talking about, well, Cody Rhodes should be the one that gets the his, the finish of his story, but they're not. They're not letting it happen. They don't want it to go that way. Okay. So far in the Royal Rumble they have so far for this year, Cody Rhodes, CM Punk, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, and Gunther have officially announced they're participating. On the women's Royal Rumble side, it's Bailey, Nia Jax, Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair. We also know that, you know, there's been where some wrestlers are starting to go ahead and talk about who they're going to face. You know, Drew McIntyre, AJ Styles, Rania, they all have aspirations to be world, uh, be undisputed universal champion. We don't know what will happen with that. CM Punk obviously wants to do that. He has his sights on being main event, main event in WrestleMania and becoming champion again. So who's going to get to do that? And while you can go ahead and worry about up the WrestleMania season up until WrestleMania time, you can let the main event be the most important thing right now, but like to set up the other matches, how often do we set up matches that are as a result of the Royal Rumble? How many feuds do we get spurned off from there? Not so much. And that's the part I'm worried about. That the booking for this show is only focused upon the very top. Triple H has to realize that, you know, with what you're doing, the spotlight right now so much that trying to give value to these younger stars that you're trying to build up to become the future of this company, right? You have a number of stars that are up at the very top, but they've also been exhausted. I think they've been up there for a long time, and it's the same people over and over. Without any real fresh talent to take the spot up. And so what do you do with that? What do you do to go ahead and build things back up so that we get more of an interest of other stars? Like, let me tell you right now, with Logan Paul being put into the 
with it being the U.S. champion, uh, listen, he's got a title. He's building off of it. But him and Kevin Owens doesn't make much of a difference. The U.S. title doesn't mean much to me anyway because it's also unfortunate that it's not somebody else that could really, really use the belt to be doing something with it. Now, I'm not saying that they have to have certain stars do something just because it's set. I mean, when they did the one-shot feud with Jinder Mahal going up against, you know, Seth Rollins, and that was all done, okay, fine, but it's the one-off. Like, Jinder Mahal is a former champion. Book him as such. Like, he's back. He's not injured. You've made him do things that he had to do, and, and he handled it. Just because the faction of in this year did not pan out another group that could not get pushed up and do anything with with sometimes you have stars you have to go and start adding more to the mix on try to go and get them over carry on across well now he has a faction with them had to build a faction around them to try to build them up and sometimes those factions you only have a certain amount of people that even even matter in those groups like honestly of the pride right the new name for bobby lashley and street profits do the Street Profits matter? Because it's Bobby that matters. I mean, just he does. When you think about Hit Row, did anybody else matter behind, besides Swerve Scott? No. It's these things where like, okay, there are the, the very top of a faction, the top of a main event, top of championship contenders and the champions themselves. But then after that, no thought process. And it's not like you need to worry about this on TV and make a big deal out of it on a regular basis. But you know what? You can do something where with this spotlight, you got 60 minutes right there, roughly, for these two matches to really build up some interest on what happens between some of these wrestlers to build some feuds. But they don't do enough of that. I don't think they do. They have, but not so much now. I can go back to past Royal Rumbles and we can go ahead and play on that and see what they've done. So looking at last year's, if I go back to last year, we can look at the winners and know that they've had something to do with them previously. Look, I asked chat GBT to just go ahead and just cheer me out. The winners and what the outcomes were after that, right? Cody Rhodes won the Royal Rumble last year, right? I remember it was him and Logan Paul. Let me tell you this. Okay, so Cody went on to go take on Roman Reigns. Why did they never got why did they never go back to Cody and Logan Paul? Why do we never get those two in a feud together? I mean, if you're gonna go ahead and break off Cody into another feud, why is he not going at why was he never going after Logan Paul? Like well before the US title picture was in play. Why don't we never do that? They never did it at all. I mean, Cody eliminated Austin Theory. We never got anything with those two ever really put together, done anything at all, right? You remember last year that Braun, Rick, Braun Strowman and Ricochet stayed around to the were around to the end, and it's like, okay, what's that all about? Some places you could say, well, there are others that we saw that. All right, there was a problem that you know some wrestlers got injured after their setup. So like with Liv Morgan, she got hurt. But you remember two years ago, Ronda won the title. After all that, was when she was the winner of the Royal Rumble, she won the world. Uh, she won the women's uh, title again, and then Liv Morgan beat her after that. And Liv Morgan had a run with the title. They kept her strong. Hell, they had they kept her. And she was the number two entrant into the Rumble last year and lasted 60 minutes only for Rhea Ripley to go in and eliminate her. But will Liv Morgan, you know, is she going to come back eventually, even after the whole drug charge, the cannabis charge? When she comes back, is she going to be back in there and once again brought back up towards that higher part of the picture? I don't know. If you wanted to do something right now with, say, Jade Cargill, like, I mean, we haven't seen her on NXT yet, right? She hasn't been featured yet. But what if you have something where if you wanted to go ahead and Jade Cargill be a part of a match and have her dominate and get the most eliminations and make it to the Final Four, you could do that. 
but they're not going to do anything with her yet. You know, the other thing was with the NXT stars they bring in, they're going to obviously have some of them come in, right? I'm baffled by the fact that you had Braun Breaker as a long-term champion. You haven't moved him up to the main roster yet. No, now you have him teaming up with Baron Corbin. Why? No faith in Braun Breaker being moved up to the main roster. Carmelo Hayes is hurt, right? And so you now got another guy that's a champion. And don't ask me to go ahead and say his name because it's already hard enough to go and say what the name is. Wow, well, what would I say? Is it? Oh, Oba Femi, right? There we go. He's the latest winner. But honestly, and when you think about who do we have now that could really be that you're going to build up. I mean, think about right this in the NXT division right now. So Oba Femi is your North American champion, right? NXT champion is Ilya Dragunov. And I ask you, okay, sure. He can make it into the Royal Rumble this year. What do you think a guy his size is going to be able to do in there? Like you have to really suspend disbelief, which, you know, are, are they going to be allowed to go ahead and let this guy get some superpower to go ahead and be able to go ahead and take over and dominate the rumble match? No, I don't think so. I don't think anybody would believe him on the main roster. He's just too small. Then I look at what Leah Valkyria, who's now women's champion, but then she's going to take on Roxanne Perez and Roxanne will have a chance to go after the belt. No word on Tiffany Stratton. I don't forget if she's hurt or not. I don't remember. And then what else? Like, you know, who else? What else do we have that we're going to talk about? That's from NXT. That could be an instant sensation to move up to that main roster and be featured in the Royal Rumble. Maybe that we don't have any of that. Because, I mean, how many stars do we have over that side that could really make a big difference and overnight sensation and be built up into somebody important going forward? I don't know. So last year was Cody. Oh, actually, no. Uh, it was Gunther that Cody had eliminated at the end of that match. And also Gunther was set for the longest time spent in a traditional 30-man rural match, right? But now what has set up is, well, Gunther's still IC champion. And he's held that title. But what are we going to do moving forward with him? He's declared for Royal Rumble. He's in there. And now you're going to go ahead and put him in there and try to book him strong as someone that went very far in that match to the very end. Are you going to have him come, come short again? Like Gunther needs to have something to have happen. Because who does he have right now for an IC title match? Like, are we going to find something they're going to build off of in the IC title picture for him to take on as a result of his Royal Rumble participation? Because it's always like there's always like a few that starts off with something else that just kind of like builds up of something. It's just like promo from promo. And that's what starts up a feud. Talk as opposed to what could be something else that builds up the anticipation for said match. But people don't think about that. You know, it's like the fans have another thought process. No one's thinking about the fact that, you know what, we have so many matches that could be built up, so many feuds that could be built up as a result of the Royal Rumble. So the Royal Rumble has something more to deal with, right? Remember, what are you doing to try to create interest in the 60 minutes within? How many times do we watch another entrant come into the match? Yeah, we sometimes get a little bit of a, a back and forth. Like we get, oh, here's a confrontation that's come up. Like they get us that, but they don't really take us much farther through that. Like I know you can't do much with, how, with that many people in the ring, but there's got to be something there. But they're not. And that's the part I don't understand here. Like they don't have a problem when they start up matches, when they start up this match. And if there's like a number of people eliminated and then there's like a one at a time entrant one at a time entrant and they kind of go through and do some things with it for like the 60 to 90 seconds that they have but like where's the consistent booking in the match to build something else besides what comes of the world champion 
on who's going to face the world champion on the men or women's side or another champion entering into the contest because they're trying to get in and maybe go up against and, you know, go after a higher title holder. Right. But there's not much that really comes into that. No, more people are worried about the, you know, the, the one thing everybody gets called caught up with the, my fellow podcast wrestling brethren, the dirt sheets out there. They all want to write about this. Here's sports Kita. Three unexpected returns we could see in the Royal Rumble match for the women. Right. This is the thing they don't worry about. It's fantasy booking. Why? Why does it matter about the fantasy booking? So it's a one-off in the Royal Rumble match for that night. But it doesn't contribute to the longer run. You could say Trish Stratus, right? I guess you could say her. But, I mean, she was part of it, you know, in a, in a title picture with Becky Lynch, right? But nothing else. It was like nothing about, you know, the Royal Rumble of last year. Let's go into that as well. Rhea Ripley would come out as the winner after all was done. And Liv Morgan was the one that was taken out as a result. You had Oscar and you had Nikki Cross. Remember that? Remember that? I mean, it was like, you know, Nikki Cross was a former champion. She was a Money in the Bank winner. But it's like, you change her back to the Sanity character, and she's like, all right, you had a gimmick with her that was a champion. Let's just throw that all away. And now you start her back over. And I'm like, okay. You see, there's just things where you know, I'm trying to figure out things of, I mean, there's some stars that get hurt, right? Recover. Rhea got hurt, right? And aside from the normal novelties that come up to this match, okay, a couple of returns as we talk about. So they talk about in this coming up this year, the expected returns, unexpected. One, they see is Lita. Why does that matter? Why is it about Lita that matters? Do we need to see her going after any titles? No. She's just taking up a spot. Can she go out there and wrestle? Yeah, that's great. But does it really matter? Like, well, let's talk about the booking. The booking in the future. So she takes this spot and like, what else are we going to do? Now, they want to say, well, Lita could be the one that takes on Rhea Ripley. Do we want that? And does anyone think that Rhea Ripley is going to drop the belt to her? Right? Now remember, Trish Stratus was out there and her and Lita, they had a thing with each other where Stratus turned on Lita, remember? And that's how the whole thing with her and Becky Lynch went along for a while, which was a good feud last year. And then Lita made a point about, this is from Daily DDT, she says that, that I actually saw an interview where Rhea threw that back out there for a match against me. I know we just talked about matches being really great without titles, but I would really want that to involve the title. She's incredible talent, love to work with her, da, da, da. Okay. Yeah, lead and Rhea Ripley. Do we want that? Does Rhea Ripley get any more clout by beating Lita? Some of you fans out there are going to think so because you're so caught up on the attitude era. Fine. Okay. But we're not going to worry about anybody else in the future that could be coming up and moving forward. That could be the next, the next person in line. Do we care about the next in line? No. They can just bring free agents and legends back here all they want. Hall of Famers. Fine. Another one they said? Well, Liv Morgan can be coming back. Well, I think she's going to be coming back. She did get a shoulder injury last August, and she hasn't been back yet. But, yeah, she can be back. She's been built up so much. She's a former SmackDown Women's Champion. Let's go. I mean, you can put her back into the mix again. And... You could let Liv and Rhea Ripley face each other once again. Now, that's a story you can go and call back from last year, pull it into this year. I would prefer that. I think when you consider Ronda Rousey decided to go ahead and let Liv Morgan beat her for the title. And she did. And it would rematch too, right? And then what happens? We get it where... Liv Morgan was out there for a long time, and then, you know, she did drop the belt. She got injured. And, you know, women's tag team titles. Okay, that's fine. 
to kind of give a rub off to Raquel Rodriguez coming here from NXT. But now, what about what happens with Liv Morgan? Why can't we put her back up in the mix? Let's do something more with her. Like, there's a whole lot of was done with her, thanks to Ronda Rousey, to push forward about her. So let's go with that. Let's move forward with her. Because she's, you know, at the top level of stardom, she's a credible champion. Like, let them have a long feud with each other. And then, you know, keep working with them. Like, but, but again, these two stars have been around here for a while. Like, I don't know if they're going to go ahead and both go to the level where Bailey and Becky Lynch are both going on, you know, into their 30s and they're still, rock, you know, still rocking and rolling. I don't know, but we could see that. But my thought process is like, okay, you could go ahead and bring back Liv Morgan and add another conduit into the women's championship contendership. Like in that whole picture, you could bring her back in and be a part of that, which is fine. And they've already been talking about the fact that, you know, she's going to be returning to company storylines in 2024. And there's no changes to plan so far that she'll be back in the bill by to WrestleMania it was very much in the mix of what would be a high profile program. So, And there's a thought that Trish Stratus might come back once again and work more. And Trish Stratus would be open to it because she's saying that what is the creative? What is the creative? What am I going to come back and do? Is it going to check these boxes? That's what she wants to find out. So they get to have her back too. Okay. That's three stars you have right there that have come back. You know, two hall of famers, and one former champion coming back. All right. Nothing against, but where are the other upstarts coming in after that? Like, remember, Liv Morgan's been around for a long time, 10 years in the company, right? Was, was she 19 years old when she came in working at NXT? And she's been on the main roster for a long time. Like, we've seen her out there. She's 29 years old. Rhea Ripley's been out there for quite a while, you know, herself. Like for the women, I would think they would need some other stars coming into the mix constantly to kind of like, you know, change things up, refresh the roster. The same thing for the women, for the men. And are they doing that or not? And I don't know, but I don't see it yet. More and more, I want to see something more where there are more stars coming back into the mix. Now look some of the men's side and this shit. So there are odds right now so far of the men's Royal Rumble match and the women's Royal Rumble match. And one of the people that were also being talked about in some rumors, which I don't want to go ahead and speculate. There are some people that are speculating that MGF did not sign a new contract and he will debut at the Royal Rumble. Let me say that one more time. There are some that are rumoring that MGF might enter the Royal Rumble match that he did not sign a new contract with AEW. No, we're not going to believe that MGF was legitimately hurt, you know, for all these, all this time he held the belt for more than a year and that he's going to go ahead and just leave the company, just go right over. And nobody's announcing the signing. Come on. And remember he did wrestle like, you know, I just don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it being possible where MGF is just going to go over to the other company like that. Mm -mm. No. No, but he's been banged up like that too. I don't see him. So currently CM Punk is the odds on favorite according to Bet Online. Gunther after that, Cody Rose, LA Knight, Randy Orton, Rock, Drew McIntyre. Okay. They think The Rock's going to be in the Rumble match. The Rock and the Rumble match. See, I don't think we're ever going to get anything where Roman Reigns is going to have to take on somebody to go ahead and be in that match. I don't think with the rock and Roman Reigns, I think he just like the rock just gets to gets to that point by default. I mean, do, do people really think that the rock's going to go through some kind of a run in order to make himself eligible to go ahead and take on Roman Reigns. I think you just build that match by yourself from tradition. Like you give these guys promos and Roman Reigns is able to convince the rock the Rock is supposed to be able to convince Roman Reigns 
to just let's get this feud going. You know, let's go for tribal chiefs. Let's go for head of the table. Let's go for your titles. We don't have to have a rumble to do that. I mean, does anybody really think in their right mind that Roman Reigns is going to be one that's going to be having to defend this title as a result of the Rumble match? No, I don't think so. I think it's going to be somebody from the to go challenge Seth Rollins. I don't think it's going to be going after Roman. I don't see it. I see a Punk's on Raw, so they're going to keep the brands put in place, then he's not going after Roman. If it's Gunther, Cody Rhodes, I mean, they're not going after him. Like, of those names right there, they're talking about LA Knight's the one SmackDown star. All the other ones are Raw stars. They're not going after Roman Reigns because Roman Reigns is on the SmackDown brand. And on the women's side, they say Becky Lynch is first. But we can see Becky and Rhea because they've already set that up. Mommy versus the man. We saw the promo this week. So Becky is right there at the very top. Bailey, Jay Cargill, like I said, I mean, Jay Cargill, you could bring in and automatically bring in. And by the way, we don't have to have her come back and like do full wrestling. She could just come into that match, debut in a match like that. She can keep herself limited in work she has to do in there, right? I mean, she's already worked enough in the ring that she could go into a, ro- in a, in a battle royal and do things just fine, all right? She could go in there right away and do that. Now, they say Rocco Rodriguez is in net. Uh, well, maybe, I don't know. Bianca Belair is also put into this. They also give odds for Nia Jackson, Oscar. All right. Like, besides the obvious title feuds we're going to get, okay, because of whatever happens is going to be what results going forward. Got it. We get that part. So Cody took on Roman last year. Lost. All right. I mean, it was nice to see Cody win after all it came about. That's a tip in his cap. But you did not win. Do you let him go on and do it again? So what do you do now? Like, I mean, with... Cody, like, how do you book him going forward into this match? I mean, Cody's not going to get his rematch here. And it's pretty obvious that it looks like Cody's not going to get that rematch. Not now, anytime soon. And who knows if he's going to get that title match against Roman? Because there's probably some thought process that, well, maybe Cody's not the one to take over. He should. I don't know what they're going to do. Where certain younger stars, they decide to go ahead and put a little bit of push behind. They'll do it within this match. The Money in the Bank match is the other one. There's not much else. There's just how many opportunities for certain stars to go move up. And the Money in the Bank, as a matter of fact, I mean, it doesn't feel like it gets much anyway. Demi Priest still holds that belt, that that, cat, that briefcase. When is he going to book? When is he going to go uh, cash it in? Is that how Seth Rollins is going to drop the belt? That we're going to get a Damian Priest cash in? Is that what's going to be? Also kind of takes away from the fact of how WrestleMania will be booked because, you know, they can have the Royal Rumble winner go after the World Heavyweight title. And it's always that thing where, okay, so here's the cash in. That diminishes the value of who gets the, the title. Because then Damian Priest could very well cash in the briefcase win, but also could quickly lose it as well. Because we've had those stars that, will win it with a briefcase cash in and then drop it. So what does that do? There's gotta be some more legitimacy, something more to build. So these stars will get somewhere with something on the women's side. We already talked about that. We can talk about previous years. Seth did take on Roman reigns for the universal title lost. And now I think about, okay, who could they do something with to do something more? Like, okay, remember, they did a thing where Johnny Knoxville and Sami Zayn confronted each other, and that was the build for their match, the Jackass match at WrestleMania, right? Never hear from Omos again. 
Like, you know, he was eliminating a lot of people, but we never hear anything more about him at all, right? Bad Bunny. There you go. There's another one. But, like, think about it. Towards the end of last year, or you know, two years ago, you had Riddle, McIntyre, Brock Lesnar at the very end. And remember Shane McMahon. What a waste. But when it was all said and done, Brock Lesnar won it, being the last competitor. And then he goes up. He does win the, what was it, the WWE Championship, right? And then he goes on and the winner takes all, which did set up the, the WrestleMania main event. And then Roman takes both belts. Okay. But other than that, who else do we have in there that really made a difference that, okay, going forward, they're going to do something more with them. Not a lot of not a lot of old younger stars being part of a part of this to do anything with. And that's another thing you gotta consider. Because it's like, okay, the people they bring up every year, who are the ones that are getting something really out of this that's gonna be more outside of the main event? I keep asking that question. And I hope somebody will give me that full answer that will tell me that. But I don't see it. Edge's return. And he wins, remember? Yeah, that's great. But it's like, they bring him back in, but it's also, I mean, you're bringing a legend back, he gets in there, and they build a story on Judgment Day, which also, it's one way, I guess, it does help out for, you know, for some other stars to go and get the rub, because Edge created this faction, and they were able to go and continue moving forward without him. I get that. But, when I think of the stars they had that, they don't do much more with. And they're just kind of left out. And like right now, under Triple H, when you think about the stars he brought on from the black and gold, what are they going to do this year? I mean, how many of them are going to get a chance to be part of the match themselves? It's one thing when you have certain tag team partners out there and there's not much to do with them. They're coming out there individually. They don't do a whole lot of that with that, which is fine. But then when you look at the last few years of every time they go in and put the certain stars back in, and you're saying to yourself, okay, well, aside from the novelties, aside from some of the others that come back in, and like all of a sudden, all right, here we go. Where do they go next? And that's the part I don't get either. It's like there's so much left on the table. But they need to make the Royal Rumble much more important. So what they got so far, Bleacher Report has been talking about this. So here's what they said. That with Raw on Monday night, Bleacher Report says they, they might be making the biggest Royal Rumble in the company's history ever. So Drew McIntyre challenges anyone who will get in its way, calls out Cody Rhodes for putting out a facade. So there you go, Cody and Drew. Now, are they going to build up with Cody and Drew in their own individual match? And does that take away what Cody will be doing with something else? Like, I mean, what else do you do with him? Last year, you had Cody going after the title. Two years ago, Cody comes back and takes on Seth. Impromptu. We're going backwards now. but So, like, Drew and Cody, yeah, they're important. But, like, they're just kind of here in this feud. And they're nothing more. They try to cite Seth Rollins defending his World Heavyweight title against Jinder Mahal. And the two delivered on dramatic near falls that teased an upset that never came. Then they make a mention about Becky Lynch challenging Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania 40 if she wins the Royal Rumble match. And Xavier Woods making Ludwig Kaiser pay for his brutal attack at Kofi Kingston. Okay. I mean, it's those things they're doing right now. So they make the point about the Royal Rumble match. So CM Punk has made it winning his one true goal. Cody Rose has promised to repeat win to set up a date with his destiny. And they will meet in the go home for Raw, uh, for Royal Rumble next week. So they have that match set up. Basically bragging rights, I guess. Right? Unless we're building a feud off of that. 
but going into the Royal Rumble, CM Punk just came back. They haven't pinned him. They have not paired him with anybody yet. Like he's talked about his aspirations. Drew's talked about his aspirations. Cody's talked about his aspirations. But where are they actually going to go? It's the part of like we don't know where, they're, who they're going to be put up with, who they're going to pair it with, or not. Jeyus is going to enter the Rumble alone. Gunther's going to enter as well. And according to building a bridge report, they say that it could be an all time great with stories that will entire define the entire hour long contest. All right. Well, that's the wishful thinking that we all get that Kool-Aid that we always get for this match, the black and red Kool-Aid, but you know, they talk about that. It'll be tough to match out years, uh, last year's men's contest, but everyone's certain to deliver. So like you said, okay, so we build up a couple matches, but look at the names we've brought up there in this. Nobody young. CM Punk, late 40s, right? CM Punk, late 40s. Cody, late 30s. Drew McIntyre, early 40s. Isn't he, wait, isn't he right? Hold on. Or no, he's like, uh, is he 40 yet? I don't know. Hold on. 38. Okay. But these are all former champions. They've all been up here at some level, one way, the shape, or the other, right? Gunther, now in the brother that's mixed, but it's like there are no up and comers, no new fresh faces being brought into this mix that are going to be put up at this level. Like for the fact that, you know, Triple H is going to go with the old guard and kind of go with the fashion, like, all right, we're just going to take these older stars. We're going to keep putting them up there at the front. We're not going to have any new fresh faces to go and show. And there's no faith that anybody has on this younger part of the roster. You know, you're carrying on crosses, you're Johnny Gargano's, you're Tommaso Ciampa's, you're, you know, LA Knights. Well, LA Knights, 40 years old too. Like, I mean, think about it. Where are the younger wrestlers, the younger talent? They're not on this roster. And if they are, you know, they're not being considered. And does anybody see anybody in the NXT roster right now that could go and leave, go ahead, build themselves to a higher level anyway? And I only say that because if we're only going to worry about, okay, Cody, Drew, Gunther, Jey Uso, this is the same roster we've seen out there for the most part. I mean, Cody did come back. CM Punk did come back. But, like, seriously, it's the fan base, the very dedicated fan base that will care. But you're not building any new new uh, audience for that. Does everybody understand where I'm coming from? Where's the audience for that? Where are they coming from? It's the future. But there's nothing established about the future of what this company is going to be doing going forward. Nothing yet, anyway. I'm waiting for it. So that's the part I'm looking at for as well. Like, where are we going to go with that next? And seriously, with some of the title reigns that some of these stars already have, All right, Gunther is was June of twenty two. He won it, so year and a half, five hundred plus days, right? Seth Rollins is the shortest run of this champion, but like again, you know, you don't want Seth to go back after Roman Reigns either, because they couldn't go on with a feud with them when they could, when they should anyway where things are anyway. We're not going to do that either. And Roman has no opponents. Like the rock is legitimately there. CM Punk could have been there, but we're not going to do that yet. You can get away with having multi-man matches up against Roman Reigns going forward. Sure. And Roman comes away with a win, right? You do a fatal four way here. You do the elimination chamber after this and then his WrestleMania match and then peace out. Logan Paul, he could just hold on to that belt all he wants, but where's his opponents? Yeah, you can make Kevin Owens a legitimate opponent for him and take the belt off, I guess. But but Logan Paul, when you're building him up, I mean, you have him now as a champion here. So now let's elevate him. Let's put him up to higher up the card. Let's make him, you know, go up against Seth Rollins. Let's get that World Heavyweight title feud going along. 
Like, why don't we get that going? When we could. By the time Rhea Ripley defends at WrestleMania, it will be a year for her holding the belt. And her and Becky Lynch would be a good match, but we're not going to have Becky, we're not going to have Rhea drop it to a a younger star, an up and coming. We're not going to pass the torch. No, we're going to go ahead and give it to Becky once one more time. This company does not think about future stars. They don't care about the developmental. When you hear that talk about the Yankees and they're all this like, you know, the high end, they just talk about the big stars. But the problem is that, sure, they have all these stars that are established and the main audience cares about them. But what are they doing to build larger than life that, you know, what they're doing, they're going to get their fan base worldwide. But what about the fan base that they can be drawing in of the future? Where is that? Because it's not doing that now. And remember, the company, TKL TK Group Holdings, they're expecting that. They need return on investment. It just can't be same old, same old. The same people at the top, they have to have something fresh going on, a change. And with the storylines they have right now, they need to be thinking about, okay, Roman Reigns is the champion for three and a half years. Who's going to be the one that will be the predecessor? Who's going to be the predecessor for Gunther in the IC title? There's no plans of that. Can anybody, is there any star capable of having a run at the top and instantly becoming a star in months or maybe a year? Can that even happen anymore in this company? Is it possible for them to go and book that way? Can they book someone undefeated so well to make them get to that point? Can they do that? Are they capable? Can Triple H do it? I'd love to find out. See if anybody has an answer for that. I don't. I don't. Will the Royal Rumble match be good? The both matches? Sure. But I'm going to be pinpointing this part right here. I'm going to be looking at the matches saying, okay, we might get one or two feuds that come off of this. Sure. That's fine. So if Cody and Drew are going to face each other and there's going to be this spat they have with each other within their match, uh, within the Royal Rumble match, and we get something off of that, okay. And then we get the winner, take on Roman or Seth, all right. Like, we already know we're going to get one outcome that will be as a result of this. But they also have to think about, okay, whoever wins the Royal Rumble, what are they going to be getting as a result of this? Like, what are they going to get the chance to be champion? And will they get to be continue to be built up and their pushes continue so they can be a legitimate star and made? Because they don't make a lot of whole stars. That, I mean, they did make Ro- Roman. They made Rhea Ripley and Bianca Belair in the last few years. Yes. Well, Bianca Belair was always weird because they had her win. Then she drops the belt to Becky. And then she gets the belt back. Right? And that didn't happen to WrestleMania. So that's the thing I got to think about. Like, Aside from the obvious matches we'll get at WrestleMania, wouldn't you like to have something else that is so exciting on the rest of the card so that when you want to go and sit down and watch maybe a three-hour show and football is already done and there's not anything else you're going to win that's going to be distracting you to watch except social media, whatever it is, that maybe you'll go home, maybe it'll take some time to go and watch the whole show. And that's the reason I say this in the first place. I want a reason to be able to watch, to get myself glued into watching two and three hour shows again on a regular basis. Like I used to, but me being a 30 plus year or it'll be 40 plus year watcher, you know, a fan. I don't want to just keep seeing the same matches and like the same, okay, these people are feuding and they're going to face each other in some other way, shape or form. I don't want to see that anymore. I'm so exhausted and tired of it. And sure, you want to make the matches a bit longer and make it more exciting? Yeah, that's fine. But it just can't be the same people over and over. And they just get to a certain point where like, okay, there's nothing new, fresh, or exciting about them. They're just kind of like stagnant. They're on here all the time. They're like comfort food. They're just familiar faces. And the same familiar faces are on my TV all the time. Okay, well, that might work, but that's only for a small audience. You're not breaking... You know, more than 2 million viewers on Raw at your best. And no more than 3 million viewers on SmackDown at its best. 
So what do you do about that? I mean, you're going into negotiations to get Raw put on another network that's not going to be USA. They're going to go to a new home. What do you do on Raw that's going to make it that? I mean, I would hope that the new home of Raw is two hours. They make it two hours, not three. I personally do like the idea of Amazon Prime taking it over. That actually intrigues me. Because I think they need something where, uh, look, it's not the competition. Let's make that clear. Now, NXT, with the competition that they had with AEW, it did make that show more exciting. And then they put all their eggs into it, remember? And it was kind of exciting when NXT, they decided to you know add more main roster stars over there to make it very exciting. Because remember, that's the thing that will make WWE do more was competition. But now I know that you know the competition that AEW provides is not anything to where it can be. Like, it's not. AEW is in the same boat. Where, I mean, they do have certain feuds and for certain stars where, like, I get more out of their feuds in their pay per views than I do with what WWE does, honestly. So I'm fine with that. Like, AEW gives you that, but they're also going to only be a certain ceiling. They're not going to surpass WWE. We already know that. But every wrestling company could use something more to, like, figure out what do they need to do to help build something more. I mean, get something more out of it. Got to shake things up. I'll tell you what, TNA, by going back to their old name, was not a bad idea, and they are getting buzzed for it. I mean, they got Nick Nemeth over there, and they made some title changes that they're hard to kill pay-per-view. Now we're going to see what the TV product looks like and see if it makes any significant changes to the show itself, which will be interesting. So I think people are going to be interested in seeing what they're going to have now. The re- named the relabeled TNA impact. Now that that show is back once again, as it was, are we getting the adrenaline rush? Are we going to get that whole feel again on what they're doing? Well, they're not giving us a six sided ring. They're keeping a four, four, uh, as a four uh, sided ring. Fine. But are they going to do anything to the format of the show to make it more intriguing, more interesting? You know, things like that. By the way, MOW is doing a special show. I think what's called Reload. That's coming up this week. So we got that. If you want to watch it on free TV, that's nice. And then next Saturday, right? Next Saturday, the Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble comes up. And of course, I'll be doing a post show right here. Kingofpodcast.com. They're going to talk all about that. So we'll have that to look forward to. And if you didn't hear, I did do a post show for Hard to Kill. You can hear that also. Kingofpodcasts.com. It's all there for you. And we're going to keep it just under an hour tonight. There's a lot more to talk about. And I also have, I know you have other podcasts to listen to where they're all pontificating and, oh, here's this person might return. This person might return. And like the future wishful thinking. No, I don't want to think about wishful thinking. I want to think about actually seeing stars are going to be caring about going forward. Like I want to see something fresh and new, different, and let's shake things up in that company. But we're not getting that yet. But you could very well do something right now with the Royal Rumble, right? You could easily do that and make it interesting and exciting. Like, it would be nice to go and see what they do, but we're not going to get that yet. Anyway, we're, we're, we're good, but I hope we get something more for the future on top of that. So let's find out what they're going to do. So thanks for listening in. Find out the shows you always do. Again, kingofpodcasts.com. That's where you find all the shows. Come back for another Wrestling Culture Podcast because wrestling needs us.